Every child in there is being watched by an adult. I understand why we want to keep them safe, but then what's going on over there in Chicago? These kids' parents decided their kids should be allowed to do more on their own. So the kids go to this playground by themselves. What like parents should let kids do this? I know, right? Left on their own for one to two hours, they look out for each other. Without parents bossing them around, they quickly organize their own lives. It's so fun just being by yourself and being trusted by your parents. But what if something happens? How quickly danger can strike a child being stalked by a predator. We hear about cruel playground bullying, terrible accidents, kids getting lost, and above all, adults preying on kids. 750,000 registered sex offenders and they could be living next door to you and you don't even know it. 24-7, you can turn on TV and see a kid being kidnapped, murdered. Lenore Skenazy is a mom who's fed up with the way TV scares parents, even though kids today are actually safer than ever. We are at a 50-year low in crime. And when I tell this to people, they're so concerned that that can't possibly be. They don't believe it. They don't believe it. Or they say, of course there's less crime against children because we're holding them so tight. But there's less crime against grown women, grown men, pets, cars. <laughs> you know, there's just less crime. You must accept this, but nobody does. Skenazy pushes the idea of free range kids. Free range kids like free range chicken? Yeah, we finally realized that, you know, is this a life? Ah! Ah, it's just not fair. They couldn't even move their, their wings. Free-range parenting is a rejection of the idea that your kids can't do anything on their own. In fact, this group of Chicago kids calls themselves the Free-Range Kids Club. It's a good break from your parents to just be with your friends and yeah. Yeah. Hang out. chill out and not have to worry about how much yogurt yeah. you eat. More? Okay. If kids don't try to do things on their own, Kids can't learn social skills. Too many for them. They can't learn team skills. They can't learn working together skills when they're always supervised. That was the impetus to start the club. These parents let their kids roam. The first outing we had, we had like five or six kids. And by the end, we like had too many kids. It was like 12 or 14. They were like a pack of, you know, kids roaming the neighborhood. Were they scared to go out on their own? The only thing I was slightly scared of was I would be embarrassed if someone would ask me where my parents were, and I was like, I didn't want to tell them that I was by myself. The fact that they were by themselves upset a security guard at the library. She would follow us, like if we went upstairs, she'd go upstairs, and like... Like so it was bizarre to her that there were children in the library looking at books and checking out books. August 6th. Thank you. You're welcome. At first, the kids just had fun, but now they say that by doing this, they gain something. You get trust from your parents. Yeah. yeah. These kids take pride in running adult-like errands. My parents will be like, oh, we're running late. Can you go pick up the dry cleaning? And I can walk to the dry cleaners. It's free range for our children. Let them play freely. Family therapist Dr. Karen Ruskin is appalled. Drink the Kool-Aid. Why do we have to rush kids into being mini adults at seven, eight, nine, and ten year olds? Because they learn and many want to. Oh, they want great. to be on their own. You know what? I want to smoke. I want to drive your car. Oh, free range. Okay, honey buns. You want to do that? Go. Do whatever you want. There are still real life pedophiles out there. How about the eight year old boy who said, can I walk home from camp? The parents think it's a safe area. He can ask for help. And you know what? He asked somebody for help. What seemed to be a very lovely man. And what did that man do? That man chopped him up. Because you we can't not the allow our, of course. Incident. Crime yes. is down. I do cite the extreme incident, but do you want to, as a parent, gamble with your child? I wouldn't want to gamble with my child. Would you let a nine-year-old take the subway alone? Lenore did. She let her son ride the subway along with, according to Dr. Phil, molesters, cyber-stalking, predators, drugs, bullies. People called Lenore America's worst mom. Why at nine years old? Bad stuff does happen. If I thought I was putting him in a dangerous situation, I wouldn't have done it. And it was his idea. Let, let me point out that it was not um, us who said, we're going to put you on the subway and we're going to make a man out of you today. It was mom and dad. 
Um, can I please take the subway home from someplace that I haven't been before and try to find my own way home? Take the G train, then the J to Manhattan, two blocks up and one over. I know, Ma. This TV show was quick to portray Lenore's choice as reckless. The construction site where he was recovered is where he was killed. That can happen, but seven years after this, Lenore's son is still alive. I live to tell the tale. He's now 16 and proud that his mom let him grow. Were you scared? Not at all. I had done it before with my parents, and it was fun. I know how to get around, and I'm confident in myself. But you free-range parents better watch out. A mother from Florida faces five years in prison for letting her seven-year-old son walk to the park alone. I honestly didn't think I was doing anything wrong. I was letting them go play. And this woman was arrested because she let her kids play right in front of her house. A neighbor had told the police the kids were unsupervised, but their mom was watching. If you had looked, you would have seen me. I was visible. Simon Arthur brought his seven-year-old to a car show, but his son didn't want to stay. I was bored, I was hot, and I wanted to walk home. We've walked to this shopping mall before. There's police stationed on the corners the whole way. So I said, all right, walk home. I wasn't scared. I keep reading about these abductions. Yeah, you can, it's possible to be hit by lightning or struck by a meteor, too. I wasn't very far, and the cop asked me where, were my, where are my parents. The child ended up living approximately about a mile and a half from this location. That's a great distance for a young seven-year-old to travel by himself without water or any uh, nourishment around with him. So we were able to charge Mr. Arthur with reckless conduct because he wasn't acting in the best interest of his child. They put handcuffs on me, put me in the back of the police car. This raises the question, whose child is it? The parents or the state? We all want kids protected from abuse, but don't parents get to decide if their own kids are mature enough to walk home on their own? To think that a child, let alone parents sometimes, make really good judgments when they are in a situation that they cannot predict. That's how they learn ignorant. to make good judgments. If a child is not at the age where they can supervise another, that they shouldn't be supervising themselves. This attitude has built a child protection industry. You can get money from parents by making them very nervous. This company sells tracking devices. If they go outside the boundary, you'll receive a text alert telling you exactly where they are. The device is locked onto your child, making it hard for the kids or even strangers to take the band off. You can get something called tooth prints, which is a, an impression that you give your child and they bite into it. And then you have an impression, a dental impression of your child that you can keep for when they find the body and it is mangled beyond recognition. The perception of the risk, it's, it's all messed up. If you're concerned about risk, don't ever put your kid in a car. Right, driving's much more dangerous. So are swimming pools. The risk is greater if you do not raise your children to be independent, to learn how to problem solve, to learn how to make decisions on their own. I can hang! The free range kids climb trees. There's a lot yes. of parents who think I'm crazy. Oh my God, she might break her arm. She might, but on their own, kids learn to... Run the risk of things. It makes you stronger in a way that's very valuable, I feel. And if the parent is there saying, that branch can't support your foot, oh, yeah. it is not as valuable as the experience for the child of putting her foot on the branch, feeling it, ooh, I'm not sure, can that support my weight, and pulling her foot back. What if the kid hurts himself? Well, then they know not to do that the next time. I'm coming down. Even if you're a free-range parent, you still care just as much about your children. Amy Graff writes the mommy files for the San Francisco Chronicle. Parents fear when they give you know, children freedom that they're not going to make good choices. Yeah. I think when you give children freedom, they actually make better choices. And what about the risk? The risk is so low. I used to be kind of afraid. Then I realized there's not much to be really scared of. Some kids have none of these experiences or even basic responsibilities. This mom will not let her 10-year-old hold a knife. I cut up all his meat for him still. I don't need no. it cut. I'm not going to choke on it. Why, it's too huge. The boy finally used the knife because he was a guest on Lenore's TV show and Lenore let him. Yeah, I'm using a knife, Mom. Oh, oh my God, what is he doing?
there's this assumption now that any time a child is unsupervised, they're in danger. She knows how to use the burner. She knows how to use the oven. She can make pancakes better than I can. I let her completely run loose in the kitchen. Paris's friends envy her experiences. What do they say? They just say, oh, that sounds so fun. Go, go, go. And the free range kids say they are more confident outdoors. You can never get lost, really. You know yeah, where everything right. is. And all of them said, I like being a free range kid.